I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Stephen and second by Vic to approve the agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next we have the council workshop report. For the minutes of the April 8, 2013 Hampton City Council workshop. Members present were Eckhart, Crowley, Hogaback, Hans, and Lutenmeyer. Jim Davies was absent, also present. Well, myself, City Manager Ron Dunn, Public Works Director Doug Todd, Police Chief Bob Schaefer, been <coughs> cited. Now for time for public comment, Jack Lyman, 6 Fifth Avenue Northeast, to address the council with his concerns of neighboring nuisance properties and nuisance properties and junk vehicles throughout Hampton, which have a negative impact on property values and the overall appearance of the community. Barry Lamos, 215 Third Street Southeast, to encourage the council to step up the nuisance enforcement procedures, specifically targeting vacated properties. Bradley Waddle, Aquatic Center Manager, reviewed the upcoming season with the Council, presented some comparable admission rate data from other communities, and stated he will be addressing the Council in May with a request for wages for himself and a possible assistant manager. He indicated he would like to open Memorial Weekend and would have limited hours the following week until schools break for summer. The Council consensus was to approve the following admission rate changes, age 0 to 2 up until the second birthday free admission, a caregiver rate of $30, all other rates to remain unchanged. Ken Mullenbeck approached the council to give details of a volunteer cleanup day in lieu of the annual Spruce Up Day, which has been an annual chamber fundraiser in the past. Spruce Up Day proved to have limited success, so Kent will be organizing a park cleanup day to be held on April 27, 2013. The city has agreed to provide garbage bags at Hampton Parks for volunteers to utilize. Council then discussed current nuisance enforcement procedures and recent citizen complaints of lack of enforcement. Council, mayor, and staff explained that the City of Hampton Nuisance Ordinance is currently enforced on a complaint basis. Some members of the public uh, present encouraged the council to increase the enforcement. Kelly Graney, 220 2nd Street Southeast, voiced his support for letting staff do more enforcement. After much discussion, the consensus of the council was to direct Chief Schaefer and Code Enforcement Officer Doug Tarr to enforce the nuisance ordinances as written as opposed to on a complaint basis. As always, citizens are still encouraged to submit complaints to City Hall and in the police. I opened discussion up on a matter of fluoridation of the water supply. Consensus of the council is that the majority of the public input being received was in support of continuing to fluoridate the water supply. Given the lack of support to cease the practice of fluoridation, I indicated the matter will likely not be brought back before the council. Ron Dunn reviewed the draft of the hotel motel tax agreement between the city and the chamber. Council discussed a perpetual agreement versus a specified termination date, language of board of directors structure, hold harmless language, termination language, and Hampton Council representation on the tourism board. After much discussion on these details, the consensus of the council members present was to move forward with an agreement which included a 10-year term, board structure, language, and a Hampton City Council representative serving in an ex officio capacity. Ron will have the agreement on the next council agenda for council consideration. I then explained a citizen request for parking limitations in the 600 block of 2nd Street Southeast. Jim Slocum, 609 2nd Street Southeast, requested the council approve a no parking limitation between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Although the letters were mailed to all affected property owners, no other public comments were heard. The consensus of the council was to have staff draft an ordinance limiting parking on the 600 block of 2nd Street Southeast on both sides with no parking from 8 a.m. through 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Staff will bring ordinance to a future council meeting for council consideration. No other business to discuss. I conclude the meeting at 7.27 p.m. With that, is there any public comment? Okay. Let's we'll move on uh, to the next item. A consideration of approval of Aaron Miller for certification as a reserve police officer authorized to carry firearm on duty upon satisfactory completion of firearms training. Chief Schaefer is not here. Uh, Jim, Captain. I'd like to introduce uh, Aaron Miller. He's uh, uh, going to be the new reserve police officer for us. Uh, Aaron started uh, July 20, July 2002, and then uh, he was the reserve officer for us uh, until July 2011, and then now he uh, decided that. He missed us, so he wants to come back. So he just uh, finished his uh, firearm training here uh, this past Tuesday, and uh, we just sent that down to the academy to get uh, 
we had a crew down there and he's here to uh, say hello to everyone and give your consideration there. Hello. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. What, what motivated you to, to come back? The uh, fact that Jim's going to be gone, you won't have to No. Wait for <laughs> <laughs> Just time to get back. Get back in the service. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, 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 Aaron. 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 Second. Motion by Craig and second by Jim to approve Aaron Miller. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is consideration of authorizing myself as the mayor, as a member of the Emergency Management Commission, to vote on the proposed Emergency Management Commission bylaws. This is uh, at the request of uh, the sheriff as the chair of the Emergency Management Commission. We've uh, seen all of, the, all of the councils just provide uh, permission for us to vote on the bylaws. So, that would be agreeable, and I'd entertain a motion. Someone to approve. Second. Second by Steve. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Next is consideration of approval of agreement for transfer of non-primary airport entitlements for Hampton Airport federal funds. Uh, Ron, do you want to go through this? Yeah. Um, each year, the, uh, <clears throat> the city of Hampton is um, appropriated non-primary entitlement funds for any FAA-related uh, airport projects that uh, we do. And uh, this year, there's $67,500 of funds that we will not be utilizing. And so uh, when you, they're, they're basically they would go back to the federal government if they're not used. Um, or one other option, the, the Iowa DOT Office of Aviation uh, recommends that one option that you have is instead of it going back to the federal government, you can um, agree to have the, the funds transferred and be used by another community in Iowa that has a project that is underfunded and uh, they can utilize those funds. So uh, the closest one is the city of Webster City, their project. So what this, this is an agreement to transfer the non-primary entitlements in the amount of 67500 to the city of Webster City uh, for their project. Um, I would recommend uh, that we Prove this. If, if we don't, then they simply will go back to the federal government. So, um, is there any questions? And these aren't funds. We won't have to cut a check. Uh, these are funds that are just banked at the federal level, and uh, so they will just go to Webster City as opposed to the City of Hampton. Thank you. There's no questions. I entertain a motion. I'd make a motion that we uh, transfer those funds or recommend transferring those funds uh, to Webster City. I'll second. Okay. A motion by Dick and a second by Jim to approve the transfer of funds to Webster City. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next on the uh, agenda is consideration of approval of mutual aid and contingency agreement by and among the Hansel and Hampton Fire Departments. Uh, Fire Chief Wilkinson. Oh, yeah. oh. No, they can't. Uh, this is just a, an agreement between the two fire departments to is for uh, legal issues or insurance or anything else. I think you got a copy of it there. I think we've had them in the past, and I think they've all expired. So we need to uh, get them with the other towns in the area, too. So we're working on that. And you'll just be bringing those as you get them completed, Ken? Right. Okay. 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 Any questions for Ken? Okay. Thanks. We'll have questions for you a little bit later. In the okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Um, 
this is a mutual aid agreement, uh, mutual aid and contingency agreement buying among the Hansel and Hampton fire departments. Uh, the, department, the departments mutually agree to provide mutual aid and contingency service to each other. The authority to make requests for assistance or to provide aid under this agreement shall reside with the requesting department, command personnel, or the command personnel's designee. For purposes of this agreement, the requesting department shall mean the incident commander or the incident commander's designee asking for assistance, and the responding department shall mean an officer, supervisor, or designee sending assistance. Any department shall have the right to request assistance from the other department, subject to the terms and conditions of this agreement. Frank County Communications Center will page out the next nearest department. If two consecutive pages go unanswered for any reason, the departments are empowered to set up automatic aid protocols in the Communications Center for specific circumstances and their service areas. A department may request assistance from any other department when requesting department has concluded that such assistance is essential to protect life. Upon request, the responding department, upon determination that an emergency exists and subject to the availability of human and equipment resources, shall dispatch personnel and equipment to aid the requesting department. The requesting department shall include in its request for assistance the amount and type of equipment and shall specify the location where the personnel and equipment are needed. The final decision on the amount and type of equipment uh, to be sent shall be solely that of the responding department. The responding department shall be immune from any liability in connection with all acts associated herewith, provided the final decision is made with, with reasonable diligence. No department shall make any claim whatsoever against another department for refusal to send the requested personal, personnel or equipment. Where such refusal is based on the judgment of the responding department that such personnel and equipment are either not available or uh, are needed to provide services in the department's response area. All departments have established incident command systems, standard operating procedures, and will implement them on all incidents involving mutual aid or contingency responses. The reporting department's personnel and equipment shall report to the incident commander or other appropriate sector officer of the requesting department. The person in charge of the responding department shall meet with the incident commander or appropriate sector officer and requesting the department for briefing and assignment. The person in charge of the responding department shall retain control of the res responding department's human and equipment resources and shall direct them to meet the needs and tasks assigned by the incident commander or sector officer. The responding department's personnel and equipment shall be released by the requesting department when the services of the responding department are no longer required or when the responding department's resources are needed in their primary response area. Responding departmental personnel and equipment may with withdraw from the scene upon given notice to the incident commander or appropriate sector officer that they are needed in the department's primary response area. It's understood that the purpose of this section is to maintain order at the emergency scene and not and shall not be construed to establish an employer-employee relationship. Section 8, no reimbursement for costs. No department shall be required to reimburse any other department for the costs of providing services set forth in this agreement for mutual aid services. Each department shall pay its own costs for responding for mutual aid or contingency response. Section 9, liability. Each responding department hereby waives all claims against each requesting department for compensation for any property loss or damage and or personal, personal injury or death occurring as a consequence of the performance of this agreement. The responding department assumes all liability and or costs or damage to its equipment and the injury or death of its personnel when responding or performing under this agreement. Each department shall procure and maintain such insurance as required by applicable federal and state law and may be appropriate and reasonable to cover its staff, equipment, vehicles, and property, including but not limited to liability insurance, workers' comp, unemployment insurance, automobile liability and property damage departments may self-insure when appropriate. From time to time, personnel from one department or another may have some concerns or questions regarding this agreement or the working relationship of the parties. Such uh, should an issue arise, they should be dealt with by the department's chain of command to provide answers or resolutions. This agreement shall be in full force and effect upon execution by all departments here too. This agreement shall remain in effect for a period of 10 years unless canceled by any department by giving 30-day written notice to the other department. The agreement may be amended by agreement of all departments. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. There's no question. Can I entertain a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion by Val and second.
second by Diane to approve the mutual aid agreement. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next is consideration of approval of proposed training fire by the Hampton Fire Department at 603 First Street Northeast. Doug and or Ken, do you guys want to bring us up to speed on this? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if you recall, this property is one that uh, we've been given a, a court order to uh, demolish, and uh, we're We've chose to do so utilizing the assistance from the Hampton Fire Department to uh, help out with this. Um, I believe they're going to be able to get some training with this, and uh, it works out pretty well um, for the city um, as far as we don't have to haul a lot of material to the landfill. Um, so this is a, a cost-effective way of, of doing it. Um, however, all bills will be um, passed forward to the property owner. Um, and or assess them to their taxes if they don't pay. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. This time, entertain a motion that we'll approve if there's no questions. Move to approve. Motion by Steve, do I have a second? Second. Motion by Steve and a second by Dick to uh, approve the proposed training fire. Any further discussion? Please? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And next is consideration of approval of hotel and motel tax agreement between the City of Hampton and the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. I'll refer to our comments to the City Manager for review of the details. Uh, thank you. The yellow pages in your packet is a draft of uh, what uh, the consensus was at the workshop to include in the agreement. and. Uh, there has always been some question as to whether or not there, an agreement is even necessary given the fact that um, if an agreement didn't exist, the city would still have to forward 60% of the hotel motel tax revenues to the chamber for tourism. And so, and then Sean uh, attended the Hotel Franklin County Tourism Board meeting yesterday and uh, entertained some questions and, and uh, this morning I visited with Mike Cross to get a legal opinion on whether or not we even need this agreement uh, to kind of put that, you know, out there and uh, get a legal opinion. So, and basically he, he feels like an agreement is necessary uh, and recommends having an agreement. He felt like the term of the agreement could be perpetual, but uh, we should add language that the agreement would be effective until the current division of funds passed by the 2002 election is changed at some election in the future. Um, and by utilizing this language, we could eliminate uh, Section 4 altogether, which talks about termination uh, of the agreement. Um, he felt that even though the Tourism Board has approved bylaws that set forth the structure of the Franklin County Tourism Board, the language should stay in the city agreement as it was original language that set the basis or foundation for the structure of the board and would continue to serve as a statement of original intent of the city. It also spells out that the original intent was to ensure city county representation on the tourism board, albeit a non-voting capacity. And any future proposed bylaw amendments uh, that should come up should consider the original intent of the governing entities. He felt strongly that the audit language should remain in the agreement. In the agreement, he was somewhat taken aback that the tourism has not been audited in uh, in the past. Uh, this language is intended as a check and balance because an audit would have a greater probability of locating any potential potential misuse of public tax funds. Um, it provides accountability to taxpayers that the entities involved are making every attempt to ensure that the public funds are being used properly. It also serves as a possible deterrent to misuse. And I explained that the Franklin County Tourism Board regularly reviews financials submitted by the board's treasurer. And he stated that uh, this review process uh, should be supported or backed up by auditing to ensure adequate use and accountability of the public funds being spent. Tourism Board members are not accountants or auditors. Uh, similar to the City Council reviewing spending uh, but oversight by an annual audit. And the county supervisors reviewing county spending, but with oversight from an annual audit. 
uh, he feels this is a necessary layer to provide accountability to the taxpayers. Uh, with the size of the financials, he felt the auditing fees would be reasonable and should be paid for by the entity charged with handling the funds, the tourism board. This could be a budgeted operating line item, perhaps. Um, he asked if the chamber financials were regularly audited, and I did not know the answer to that question. Um, they don't use, like, utilize public funds. Those are donations, so uh, I, I don't know. Uh, his thinking was that the tourism could possibly be audited at the same time that the chamber is audited. If the chamber is not audited, then the tourism could hire their own and pay for as an operational expense. Perhaps not every year, but maybe every two or three years may suffice. The current language in there would be, is that uh, the book shall be subject to an audit, independent audit. Um, the city may periodically request an audit and shall receive a copy thereof at the cost of the chamber in the yellow one, but we could change that to the cost of Franklin County tourism, so the chamber doesn't feel like they can use chamber funds to pay for an audit. So based on Mike's recommendations, I've put together this beige uh, agreement, which kind of implements his recommendations, and uh, they end up affecting number one term. And instead of a 10-year agreement, which is what you guys proposed in the yellow, it would say this agreement shall be in force until such time that the division of hotel-motel funds is changed by referendum election by this, of the citizens of Hampton. Um, under audit, basically the city may periodically request an audit and shall receive a copy thereof, all at the cost of Franklin County Tourism. Board of Directors, one member shall be a Hampton City Council member appointed by the Hampton Mayor. Uh, in this yellow form it's set annually. Um, I removed that just to see if that would be more receptive to everybody. That way, it's just at the pleasure of the mayor. If you know, if he wants to appoint annually, he could. If he wants to appoint someone and let them serve until their term's over, that's fine too. Um, I think that's all the changes. So, I guess. Yeah, I did attend the tourism uh, meeting last night, and, I, and there were there were several questions uh, as as to why some of the some of the changes took place, um, uh, particularly uh, with regard to um, the ten year versus perpetual. And, and as as Ron mentioned, you know we're uh, we're in this until uh, there's a vote of the people anyway, so it's essentially perpetual uh, anyway. Um, and then. Uh, their uh, request or their discussion last night centered around uh, they were perfectly fine with any any type of audit but they suggested that if the city requested an audit the city should be on the hook to pay for it and then as far as the question about uh, changing the wording in the board of directors uh, so that it would be a city council member appointed by the mayor um, their only concern there was uh, you know if whoever the mayor is changes that person annually, then they don't really build up steam with the group or anything like that. And I, I kind of explained that that person, whoever it would be, whether it's annual or for the length of their term, is there uh, as a as a an eye man for the city council. Um, not really there necessarily to advance tourism so much, but as to keep a watch on their proceedings uh, for the city council. Um, so. Um, but yeah, we could we can make that whatever. I would suggest, and you guys can do whatever you want, but I would suggest with the changes that have been made just in the last couple of days uh, since you guys last reviewed this, that you could maybe you table this and, and absorb the language. Um, and uh, then we can come back and, and, and vote on it at the, at the next full, meet, full meeting and talk about it at the workshop before that. But whatever, whatever you guys want to do. If you have any questions, do it. And I guess I would just say that um, I would recommend that we um, that we move towards the, the beige one utilizing Mike Cross's recommendations and uh, kind of use that as the basis in a few. But it's up to you. 
The current agreement expires in June, is that correct? June 30th. I guess I'd make a comment. I, I, I would be ready to go ahead and, and move toward this agreement, the uh, cross-draft. Uh, I think we've, we've discussed it several times. I don't think we have anything really new here, a little bit of tweaking. So um, I, I'd be perfectly comfortable in going ahead and, and making the changes, the few changes that are addressed in this cross-draft. And I understand your, what you're saying, but I think we have discussed it several times and I feel comfortable with it. Yeah, you, uh, you, can, you can approve this one uh, tonight. Yeah. You know, you've outlined it. We've, we've outlined the changes um, and the agenda calls for consideration, approval of the motel tax agreement and so this would just be the updated version but it's up to you whether you want to yeah, wait. If there's no other questions or any other discussion, then I, I would suggest we have a, have a motion that we can discuss. I'd make a motion to go ahead and accept the agreement uh, as proposed in the, uh, I refer to as a cross draft, it has a, a couple of changes uh, from what we discussed in our, in our, uh, our meeting on Monday night. So I would make a motion to approve this agreement. I'll second that. Okay. I have a motion by Dick and a second by Steve to approve uh, what we're referring to as the cross draft. Um, any discussion on the matter? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next is approval of the claims as submitted by staff. Uh, tonight, those are in the amount of $141,282.14. Can I entertain a motion? So moved to approve. Second. Motion by Diane, second by Steve to approve the claims. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next is consideration of approval and adoption of resolution 2013-08, a resolution approving final pay estimate number 38 in connection with the Highway 65 improvement project, Iowa DOT project number STP 065-733-02C35, motion dashes in the two. Uh, and I'll refer a reading of the resolution to uh, Andy. Are you going to read this? I think we're on the I don't have a copy. Right. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll read the resolution and we'll have Andy come up. Okay. Um, whereas Veenster and Kim Inc. have presented to the City of Hampton final pay estimate number 38, the amount of $0 in connection with Highway 65 Improvement Project, City of Hampton has reviewed said proposal, proposed final pay estimate for the said contract and uh, Iowa DOT has reviewed and approved said final pay estimate for the said contract. Now therefore be resolved, City of Hampton, Iowa, here with approves final pay estimate number 38 as recommended by the Attorney Kim. It's further resolved that Ron Dunn, City Manager B, and is hereby authorized to sign and execute such final pay estimate for the said contract. Andy? Andy Smith with Eastern Kim on Mason City. Um, this should be the final action you have to take on the Highway 65 project. Um, it's more of a formality than anything. Finally got through all the paperwork, um, through the audits the DOT had, um, make sure they had all the I's dotted and T's were crossed. And like Ron said, the uh, amount of the pay us from was zero dollars, which is always a nice amount. And like I say, this should be should be it. So anybody have any questions for me? Did you bring the champagne and cake? I didn't. I should have. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Yep. There's nothing else. I'd entertain a motion. Who do approve? Second. A motion by Craig and a second by Steve to approve and adopt resolution 2013 08. Any further discussion? Very done. We'll move forward with the vote. Eckhart? Aye. Arms? Aye. 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 Lucas Meyer? Aye. Crowley? Aye. Davies is Aye. here. <laughs> okay. Um, next is the consent agenda. Uh, tonight that includes approving previous minutes of drafted Tuesday, March 28, 2013 regular session meeting. 
and scheduling the next regular session for Thursday, April 25th, 2013 at 6 p.m. in City Council Chambers. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Craig and a second by Valley. Approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Staff reports, Fire Chief Kent Hopkinson, anything to add? Uh, basically, right now we have 23 members on. Uh, I don't we have one meeting a month, we have two drills a month. And like this trick training where we've been up there uh, once with the ladder truck and stuff, we did some training with that. And actually, those training drills are a good experience for everybody because you have to work with the actual house. And, that was not that great because that window's not been in it. The next one will be a lot better. So. Do you have this one scheduled? Yeah. It, it was it when okay. April 27th or May 4th. I read that. Ken, if an, if an individual had a structure that they wanted to uh, be responsible for getting rid of, um, can they approach you? What, what are the rules that they're under, that you're under, uh, in order to accommodate some of these other structures that we talked about in town that need to need to go away right well basically you can only get burn uh, two houses a year with the shingle bomb which that's main uh, qualification and then but if they want to take the shingles off and still we go ahead and burn more than two years so. and asbestos also checked yeah, totally. yeah that has to be checked and make sure there's no asbestos at all and, have you guys set a rate for that as far as for an individual to? Um, I think we had, I think we had like 1500 in the past we've done. Okay, thanks. Ken, I see your dates when you have listed in your alternative date, but what time do you usually start those permits? Is it early in the morning, like five or six? Oh, okay. Hopefully there's not much wind then. And sure. How long do you anticipate something like that, that size takes to burn down? Um, usually they're down in two or three hours. Okay. But they'll sit there and smoke for quite a while. Sure. Initial building's down in a couple hours. So, any other question you again? Thank you very much. Okay, Thank appreciate you. it. Police Chief Shaver is absent. Captain Helton, do you have any input? We just uh, sent uh, Officer Robert Gitson to a three day school. He's back now. Uh, he went to school for an interview and interrogation at uh, Des Moines Police Academy, so he's returned and back to work. Um, also, uh, we're going to have our police officer testing on April 20th. Uh, the officer that we choose there will be replacing Joel McWilliams, who uh, took a job here with the, the city of Lewis Public Works. Um, radio station, they've been notified as far as uh, the traffic lights at the intersection of Highway 3 and uh, First Street Northwest. And basically told uh, that uh, to help inform the citizens that uh, the flashing yellow. Uh, means slow down, proceed with caution. Flashing red means to stop and then proceed uh, with caution, yielding to the traffic uh, that's moving on Highway 3. Some people just get a little bit confused uh, here this past couple of days, thinking that they should be stopping on the yellow light, and then that causes confusion for the people that are stopping on the red light, and so they're saying, okay, you know, they're stopping, so therefore I'm going to go ahead and proceed, not realizing the stuff that you could cause an accident by doing so. So we thought we'd get it out uh, to the media and let people know that uh, this is what they need to do. They do not have to stop on that that flash of yellow. Just to use caution to proceed. Uh, as far as nuisances, I'll just give you the rundown here from January 1st uh, through April 10th. 
of this year, uh, we had uh, zero nuisance citations issued, 26 nuisance letters were served, 19 were closed with seven remaining open. And the mark I know has been out uh, hitting them pretty hard this past week. With the weather the way it is, people have a little bit difficult time getting some of the properties cleaned up, and we can understand that. But uh, we're going to be hitting pretty hard here. This uh, we've got some letters going out. And just give them a chance to go ahead and get these properties taken care of. I think that's about all that I've got. Any questions for Jim? On the stoplight, uh, mm -hmm. our options down the road. I, mean, I think it's our understanding that that if these stoplights are not fixable, the parking <coughs> is not there, or we don't have the, uh, we can't put a stop sign back or stoplight back in. Yeah, and I'd have to refer all that to either go to Ron or Doug. They know yeah. more about, you know, what uh, needs to be done and what the state can allow. Okay, thank you. Know, yeah, Doug's here and stuff, so he could probably address that for you there, what's required and, you know, what the laws are on the traffic lights and stop signs. Okay. Anything else for Jim? Thank you, Captain. Doug Tarr, Public Works. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Compost site's open and operational. We have a familiar face and Jim's here. Jim Card is back uh, to work out there. And then we've also hired two other new employees uh, to help out out there, Denny Shirt and Ivan Lindlaw. And uh, we have uh, three people out there instead of two this year, but uh, same amount of hours. Uh, we just uh, got to be some pretty hot days for one guy to sit out there for you know, 10 hours or so in the blistering heat or you'd say way in the cold. And um, they were able to divide up the hours pretty good amongst themselves. And, and uh, I look forward to that. And if someone wants to take some time off, there's a little more flexibility with coverage in there too. So uh, very excited, had 10 applications. Um, that was the most that we've had yet for part-time seasonal anything. So um, I was pretty excited about that. And uh, also uh, some of the applications for that position that, that didn't get that position um, have indicated that they would uh, possibly like to uh, be considered for the part-time seasonal mowing, which is something that will close uh, tomorrow afternoon, actually. Applications go out there. We've heard from a few, and it looks like we have some applications to look at for that, too. Um, you know, if uh, we keep getting some of this wet weather, maybe the grass will grow this year. Um, so we look at probably hiring that uh, position uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, not necessarily when that will start, but we'll at least get the people uh, hired on board. A um, lot of other stuff going on, and we're all over the place. And to answer your question, Dick, I don't think it's necessarily that we can't put lights back there. I, I think they would allow us to, but I think it'd be at our cost only. And uh, uh, quite honestly, uh, a set of traffic lights with new fixtures and everything, uh, you're looking at approximately $250,000, $200,000 right in that realm um, for one set. Mm -hmm. um, parts for these, they're dinosaurs. Basically, KWS is, is a company we've uh, handled <coughs> worked with for many, many years. They know our lights actually better than we do as staff. Um, the parts we get, they have to go to their boneyard. And there's no such thing as a new component for, for these lights. Uh, they're just that aged and uh, it is what it is. Um, some people had questioned about the flashing lights, uh, why you could do four-way red flashing at this particular intersection because we can do that at uh, the Highway 3 and Highway 65. Right there, though, you have two uh, intersecting highways. Um, so that's typically normal of those type of intersections. Um, with the one that we have here, uh, it's just not set up for that. Uh, so I've talked to uh, DOT, um, talked to KWS, and get what's the best thing? And it was initially exactly what we're doing right now is what we should be doing. And, uh, you know, Thad and I talked about that from the DOT a little bit today again, just to confirm everything. because. We keep getting a lot of calls from folks, and if they actually just utilize what the law states at that intersection, they'll be just fine. Um, but like uh, Captain Hilton said, uh, stopping on a flashing yellow, that's not really abiding by the law there. They actually just need to be um, slowing down, proceed cautiously. 
So uh, then on the other side, um, you got a red flashing red light. You stop and you wait till traffic clears, and, and that's what you're supposed to do. We may have confused people a little bit by having a four-way stop yeah. for a yeah. 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 right. it, it, it is, it is. And, and, and what yeah. had happened with that was, and we, <coughs> thinking, we had it the way it is today, the, just the flashing lights, PD started getting a bunch of complaints when we had it initially set up that way. And uh, it's like, we figured, got to do something, got to do something. Uh, staff put the four-way out thinking, you know, we're putting something out. And actually, it worked. Be honest with you, but unfortunately, if there had been an accident at that time, the city would have been liable. So not a good call. But uh, nothing happened. We're good. We're right where we need to be. So you couldn't just shut the lights off and put the four-way stop up there. We could. That's the only second option. Uh, Chief Schaefer and I discussed that, and he did not like that option uh, for low light. We had some fog the other day, um, and during the morning time, and then at night time, um, to come up on that four-way stop. Uh, on the highway side, if, if it's a low light issue, it's difficult to see, and it's small to where if you had four lanes there, you have a semi maybe, and then a car on the outside that's small. Maybe he's sitting back a little way, he may not see that four-way stop. So really, we, um, you know, after the discussion, I, you know, asked the chief, you know, what do you want to do? And chief said, let's leave it as it is, and that's legal, and that's what we're going to do. So um, I just, I, I really hope people slow down through town and uh, you know obey all the laws. We would would we have the option if the lights are not fixable, um, would we have the option of just placing uh, stop signs on first street and letting highway uh, three be uh, just to uh, go through? Yeah, that I think that would be the simplest way and yes definitely that would be probably one option to look at. Probably the cheapest option to look at too. The DOT had made that suggestion a number of years ago when we talked about making Highway 3 a three lane, <coughs> I remember. We, we did. We had a lot of discussion there, and uh, uh, it was kind of like a carrot got dangled out in front of us for a little bit, but they need, they wanted us to give up four lanes for three lanes, and maybe they'd help with a little funding, um, a lot of funding actually, but uh, you know, the, citizens, yeah. the citizens chose that uh, they wanted to keep it four lane. Mm -hmm. From what I'm seeing, uh, Change is a difficult thing to accept in town a little bit at times by folks <laughs> uh, with things like that. So not being negative, not being negative, just say when you see something changes just a little bit, there's a lot of people that notice it, by golly, and sometimes, you know, it, it does. It throws people off, and you're right. As simple as that four-way stop there for a couple days, that really threw some people, and, and uh, understandably, you know, we have, a, we have a pretty diverse community, and that's the way it is. Uh, so when you're uh, crossing on foot, do you just kind of have to take your chances? You know, when you're crossing on foot, um, I'd just be really careful, I guess, how I'd proceed. But, you know, uh, traffic is supposed to yield to pedestrians. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you go through driver's ed, they, they try to teach you to be aware of those. I know, believe me, I know. I, I walk across the street to go to Hardee's, and I walk across the highway to do a number of things here and there. And, and uh, you feel like you're playing Frogger, but uh, and hope you don't get smushed. But you know, we're just hoping that people would just abide by the law a little bit, and I think everybody would be fine. Any more heat for Doug? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got a question on the, the chip ceiling, and okay. maybe you've identified the, the alleys where this chip ceiling will not be an application by our people; it will be by Heartland, correct? Correct. And have you designated which alleys you're going to try this process, this this project with? We we did. We um, we're we're wavering on one of them, and I I'd like to probably talk about that at a workshop here fairly soon. Um, but uh, the one was the Get and Go Alley. Um, the second one was the Napa Alley, and then the third one that at one time was considered was down on uh, I believe that's we call that Eleventh Street. The gravel way on the southeast part of town, um, by where the pond is. There's a, a Springer's Pond mm -hmm. in that area. Now, um, but it was also brought to our attention that another good application, a good area for this, since the one on 11th Street really isn't traveled as much, is the uh, the alley behind uh, the theater and the uh, um, Hampton Heating. Um, thinking maybe we would maybe switch those two potentially, see how it works, 
and then, uh, but it, it's always, you know, up for debate. You know, we can do anything. But uh, the amounts that were budgeted for, um, we can handle any of those. We may be even, Lemon Street's a little bit longer. We can, we can maybe even add two blocks for that one long stretch there. Um, but something that we can discuss. You can go and map or pretty, pretty certain? I think that's pretty certain on those. Those are the ones that give us the biggest headaches as far as commercial applications and, and such. Um, but uh, if anybody else has any more, I would, I would, I would anticipate if, if, if this is successful this year, maybe we take a look at doing it more next year. Um, you know, not try to break the bank by any means, but maybe take a good hard look if there are some other areas that people are questioning. Um, there are some other communities out there that do all their alleys with chip seal. Um, it, it, it does cost more, but I do have some pricing on what it costs to put three inches of rock on a 300 foot alley too. That's not cheap. And to do it over and over and over seems to uh, really eat away at the, at the budget. What was that the cost for chip seal for a block? Oh, I don't have it in front of me right now, Dick, but I can make a sure pull it, bring it to the next workshop. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Rhonda? I um, just want to thank Karen Miller left for committing to being reserve officer. And uh, we've, uh, Doug and I have put together a draft of uh, a written agreement between the city and Kevin Prowley about uh, brush being disposed of at this site. We're going to bring that to the next uh, council workshop so we can anticipate looking that over. Uh, it's in Kevin Crowley's hands right now to see if he has any concerns with it. So we'll see what he has to say and then approach the council. And uh, that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. And I just want to say i gotta, I got to keep the council here for five minutes after the meeting to discuss a union uh, situ uh, situation. So just hang around for five minutes with me. Thank you. That is good. That's exempt from the open meetings requirements, that's true. All right, Trump, uh, council reports, Val Um, Nothing. Diane Brown? Uh, thanks, Aaron. We appreciate his service. Secondly, it's uh, garage sale season, and for those people that love to put their signs up on the city post and everywhere before, I would appreciate them taking them down afterwards. I hate seeing those up afterwards. A couple of things, Mayor, I'd like to uh, see. I'm glad to see that we're finally getting progress made on the house to be burnt at uh, 603 First Street Northeast. I think that the citizens around that area, especially after we've heard from Mr. Linen and, and others at the last workshop, will be happy to see that go down too as well. Uh, I'd like to thank also Mr. Linen and Lamos and Greeny for their input and what they shared with us. Uh, it kind of proves to the council, I think, that there's far more people watching what goes on in town sometimes and what we're aware of, but uh, this affects everybody. But, uh, last thing I had is um, I've noticed and I've, I've been brought, it's been brought to my attention about parking in Progress Park. People are pulling off the swimming pool drive and facing to the south. Next to that, uh, <coughs> strip there. And I think we had one vehicle get stuck in there here back. And uh, that's not supposed to be a parking area right yet, is it? No. It, we have decided that we're going to turn it into a gravel pad this summer as soon as the weather permits, but yeah, it wasn't designed to be parked on. I just you wouldn't think you'd have to put up signs for that one. It's pure mud, but there's still people falling in there and getting stuck. But that's on their uh, at their expense and to their their burden or whatever incurred the cost incurred and taking stuck. So that's all I have there. Okay. Thanks, Craig. Steve Marks? Nothing to mind there. Okay. Dick Luton Um we have a uh, Park cleanup day that's coming up that's being organized by the chamber. I'd like to encourage all citizens to be a part of that and also to encourage um, all citizens to um, be responsible for themselves and help their, their neighbor out. Uh, springtime brings a lot of um, uh, dirt and, and, um, and messy things visible to us after the snow is gone. So um, uh, clean up your own messes and help your neighbor. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, they left you off. Jim, go ahead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Yeah, I just want to thank Doug and the Parks Department for getting the tennis courts and Progress Park ready for the first tennis meets that we had. We pretty much had short notice because of the weather, but thank you very much. It went really well. Thanks. That's all? Yes, that's all. That was, that was <laughs> All right. Well, um, I've already let you know that I, I did uh, attend the tourism meeting last night, and that was uh, I was glad I went because I was able to answer a lot of questions and uh, gain some insight into uh, some of their questions and concerns. So, uh, thank them for having me. Um, and as you can see, we are now officially a Tree City USA. We're probably displaying that throughout council chambers. So, uh, thank the Tree Board for their work on that and. Uh, Forward to the signs being posted and the trees going up. And all the there will be, excuse me, I, I forgot there will be trees going up along 12th Avenue. Um, about 30 uh, pine trees along 12th Avenue um, on the north border of our property where we're dumping snow now. That's going to happen on Arbor Day, the 26th. Okay. Very good. Um, but that's that's pretty much all I have. We've got this plaque here. I've, uh, Asked Ron to hang that in city in, uh, city council chambers here, so that'll be probably displayed. So, uh, there's nothing else. Is there any? Yes, sir. Yes. Sorry, I thought the meeting started at six thirty, but I was asked to come down and talk about appliances and stuff on your city cleanup. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Come right up. Yeah. I guess I make sure what your questions all are. Or uh, Doug, you wanna? Yeah. Could you state your name and at your name, sir? Oh, Dave Bach. I run Complete Appliance D Manufacturing. Okay. Yeah. Basically, I'd ask Dave here. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, we'd ask Dave to be here and, and discuss uh, um, what his services are. Uh, we understand there's some free items that can be collected, um, but there's some uh, contingencies on some of that, and then he also has some fees for some other uh, options and. Uh, since we do not have the uh, spruce up day like we're used to, um, you know, maybe it's something that we can uh, consider to put together uh, for some of this type of uh, uh, cleanup, basically, in our community. And maybe it's, it's a minimal um, logistics effort on our, our part, possibly, to put something together. But uh, we'd ask them to come and just talk about what the services are. I am state licensed and bonded to dispose of old appliances. Um, as of right now, the appliances themselves I am not charging on to pick up. TVs and computer monitors I have no choice but to charge on. And the, the fee on them is based on what size they are. Uh, any scrap metal I pick up. Um, vacuum cleaners I pick up. Cars I do buy some of that. If, there's any of that people want to get rid of. As long as they have a title, I'm more than happy to purchase it. Okay. Yeah. Dave, I had a person <coughs> approach me today at work and asked about, they would gotten wind of what you're doing in Sheffield, mm -hmm. picking up appliances. They wanted to know, do you take old water softeners? I have um, softeners. There is technically is not nothing in a softener, okay. so it could go to the trash, but there's a lot of trash companies that would not pick them up. That's why they asked that. They had been turned down a couple of different times by their, their waste hauler that they wouldn't take it. And, and, and I don't understand that one because there's nothing in there. Sure. <laughs> but I thought I would ask yep. since you were here. So. Yes, I have picked up softeners before. Okay. I may charge a couple of dollars on them because more or less what I'm going to do is take it right to landfill. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. So if, if we get a, a weekend or a day set up for curb side, uh, people have set things on the curb, but anything metal, bicycles, the, those sorts of things? Or yeah, not? I'll pick up any of that. Okay. And uh, no charge for appliances. That's, nope. that's awesome. But yeah. it's a 10, 10 minimum, right? Yes. 10, 10 appliances minimum for you to make your make it worthwhile. To yes, to make the trip down. Now, let, let's say... Uh, Let's say we publicize the fact that people can have their appliances picked up at the curb free of charge, um, and we maintain a list at City Hall. Could we just maintain a list, and once we get 10, we call you, and then you come and we give you an address list, and you just go pick them up? Would yes, that work or not? That, that would work. Okay. Um, you, most of the cities I do, they set up a specific day or days. Okay. 
uh, depending on the size of the city. Like Allison, they will do half the town one week, half the town will get next week. The TVs, they collect the money at City Hall. They have the address for the TV, what size it is. And, and the agreement is um, if somebody comes in and says, I have a 19-inch TV, which is $15, and it's actually a 32-inch TV, which is $25, it's going to be left at the curb. And less, and now, but I do have some cities where I write down the address, we'll pick it up. They will add the extra amount on the water bill, or the city will charge them for it to collect the money. And then I, I bill the city directly. I have other towns, they, they, the resident has to be there when I pick it up and pay for it. So there's different ways there, to do there's it. There's different ways to do it. The measurement on a tree is a, on a, tree, a TV is a di <laughs> diagonal measurement, correct? Yes, the, top the bottom corners. Yes, on uh, seventy-five percent of them, the first two numbers are the model number will tell you what size it is, but there is twenty-five percent that don't. If I remember numbers from last year, I, I think there were over thirty washers and dryers and appliances that were involved. Well, yeah, I, I, I believe that's right. My question would be, you're, you're talking about physically leaving these at the curbside. If they're at the curb, I don't care if they leave them up by the garage. Mm -hmm. I can wheel them out or back in. Sure. Um, that don't bother me on that aspect as long as I don't have to pull them out of a house. or. Right. Well, I was just trying to think of how we would set them up as citizens would put them at their property. If, if that or is it easier to have a central location? That, that is totally on. up to you. There's a lot of people that have no way to transport it. Right. That's right. Any other questions? Any particular day of the week work better for you? or? No. Nope. Well, this year it's been been different. i got more Saturdays than I've had in nine years since I've been licensed. Um, but most of the time, that through, through the week, but this year, like I said, I got more Saturdays than I've had before. So, depending on when you're looking at, to whether, whether that day is open or during the week is pretty much open. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Appreciate Anything else for the group? We're going to motion to adjourn then. So we'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.